Howdy! My name is Abraham and I've been coding my whole life. Currently, I am a modder, beginner game developer and neural networks enthusiast. In past few years, I've coded a lot of projects and maybe you heard about some of them. Chrome Dinosaur game reimagined in 3D and then published on Play Market. Open source neural network that plays CSGO by itself using AI vision, voice assistant Jarvis that works using offline neural networks and also many kinds of bugs games, mods, etc. By starting this YouTube channel, I wanted to share my experience, so people out there can learn new things much easier. Thus, today I want to tell you about how to become a programmer, or should I say, how to start coding the proper way from scratch, in order to succeed and never fail. But before we'll move on to the steps of becoming a programmer, I'll make an assumption that you might have three questions in mind. And the first one is, do I need to be good at math? Don't worry, I don't read your mind. It's just a common question that pops into your head when you think about programming. And the short answer, nope. Math is not essential for programming. At least at the beginning it doesn't matter. You can be even bad at math and still master programming at quite a high level. You see, most of the time programmers use four basic math operations. That alone will cover like 90% of all your needs. The only exception here is machine learning. And when it comes to machine learning, math is a bullet you can't dodge. But even without deep knowledge of math, you can still use an existing models and even train your own neural network models. It's just uh, you will be limited in what you can do with machine learning without uh, deep knowledge in math. So again, answering the question, is math essential for becoming a programmer? Nope, it's not. But will it enhance your coding skills and make your life easier as a programmer? Yes, of course. The way you should look on it is that math is a science based on logic, and logic is a big deal in programming. For the same reason, discrete mathematics is considered the most useful branch of math for programmers. It includes things like mathematical logic, combinatorics, graphs, data structures, in short, all the stuff you'll eventually run into. But not today, and maybe not even tomorrow. For the first year or two, you'll have more important things to focus on, and one of them is is actually finding time to learn programming. Now, that may sound obvious, but learning programming takes time. You can easily spend a whole year learning the basics of writing code. And some people actually already have a job, a family, and just not that much free time. Spoiler, you're not the first person with a job and no time. So the short answer is yes, of course you can juggle it with your 9 to 5, and maybe eventually switch the job. If you want to work as a programmer, that is. Not gonna lie, the more time you have, the better. But honestly, even if you got just like one or two hours a day, that's good enough. It'll let you progress slowly but steadily. Take for example, one of the well-known programming books, Groking Algorithms by Aditya Bhargava. It contains 320 pages and 13 chapters. You can read them through in a month, spending only an hour or two a day with a moderate effort. However, a more in-depth study for mastery could extend this up to 3 months. To make it clear, even if you spend 5 hours a day, it'll still take you 2-3 to three months to master this material. That's why you should keep in mind, time alone doesn't define the result. Focus and dedication, that's the real formula. And of course, learning new stuff is much easier when you are young. And that brings us to the third most common question. What about my age? Maybe I am too young or maybe I'm too old for this. Ah, uh... oh, shit. Here we go again. Okay, let me put it in this way. When someone wants to achieve something, they look for an opportunity, not an excuse. In other words, there is absolutely no reason why you can start programming at certain age. As for me, I started coding when I was about 12 years or so. Some of my friends started in their 20s or something like that, and there are tons of examples of people who began to write code in their 40s, 50s, and even 60s, and still managed to succeed. The key idea 
idea you should keep in mind is that becoming a programmer isn't some kind of competition. You're not up against anyone. Just make sure to take your time and keep learning step by step. Okay, now let's move on to the actual steps of becoming a programmer. And the very first thing you need to do is to actually choose your first programming language. As simple as it sounds, that's where the fun begins. I mean, sure, I can list all of the languages and even break down their pros and cons, tell you what's fast, what's easy, what's used by Google or NASA, and even what's used in your grandma's toaster. And you will still be sitting there like, hmm, what language should I learn first? If you ask me, it's like choosing your first car. Sure, I can say go get a Subaru, because I personally like it, I mean, who doesn't like Subarus? But will it fit your daily tasks and needs? Who knows, people are different. Most people don't tend to choose their car based on the brand or a specific model. They usually make a decision based on their needs and the daily tasks the car must help them to accomplish. Whether it's a family trip, a fun to drive modern sports car that will help you to pick up girls, or just a comfy everyday ride to work vehicle. You see what I mean? The same goes for programming languages. The only exception that there is no language that'll help you to pick up girls. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Okay, okay, jokes aside, you should choose a language based on what you wanna do. Maybe you wanna create a dream game and release it on Steam, or maybe a website for your local shop. Oh wait, maybe you have a genius idea of a mobile app. Nope? Okay, I gotcha, you're all about building revolutionary neural networks. Still not the case? Well, sometimes people just struggle to decide. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Just spend some time and make different things, as easy as that. Mess around with game dev, uh, try to build a website, or maybe train a custom AI. It'll definitely help you figure out what you're passionate about and decide what you actually want to do. Here is the deal. No language is perfect. Some are great for certain tasks and some are, well, not so great. So before picking one, ask yourself what you actually up for. Take for example languages like C or C++. They are considered the most performant which is why they're often used for performance-critical tasks, like uh, games such as GTA V or Forza Horizon or heavy-duty software like Adobe Photoshop. But as usual, it comes with a cost. The downsides of these languages is their steep learning curve. That's why I would not recommend them as your first language, unless you're ready to spend the next 3-5 to five years mastering them, that is. There is also a similar language called Rust, and Rust is considered just just as fast as C or C++, yet significantly more secure. For instance, parts of Discord's heavily loaded servers are written in Rust, and right now certain components of the Linux kernel are actively being rewritten in Rust as well. Rust is also known as the number one favorite language among programmers worldwide. There is even a running joke that goes, you should rewrite it in Rust. And it actually makes sense, a lot of things are actually being rewritten in Rust. But still, it's far from the best choice for your first language, because it also comes with a steep learning curve. Most neural networks, bots, and even websites run on Python. It's fairly simple and convenient language that's actually a great choice to start with. Not only Python comes with gradual learning curve, but it's also one of the most popular languages out there. It's even held the number one spot for years in rankings like TOB and PyPL. And there is one one more thing that makes Python a special language. Even if you switch to a different language in the future, Python will likely remain your go-to secondary tool, because it's just that good at what it does. Let me tell you, there is no other language like Python, one that lets you prototype ideas in minutes and handle neural networks just as easily. That's why Python is such a great choice for your first language. Not only does it let you build whatever you want, but it's also at its peak right now. And finally, when it comes to making mobile apps, these days it usually involves languages like Swift for iOS apps and Kotlin for Android apps, while in the past it was mostly Objective-C and Java. Also, almost the entire enterprise, world banks, stores and critical financial systems is written in Java. Oh, and Minecraft is also written in Java, should not forget that. Now as you 
see some languages perform much better for certain tasks while others excel at different ones. On top of that, there are plenty of operating systems and platforms. Windows, macOS, Linux, Android, iOS, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Arduino, WebOS, Tizen, and when it comes to neural networks, there are even dedicated edge devices like the Raspberry Pi or Jetson Nano. I mean, all that variety can make your head spin. So if you're still struggling, let me give you an advice. Just go learn Python. It's one of the best languages out there, and it'll teach you how to write code. At this step, you can also go in the comments below and write down the language of your choice. Or maybe you still can't decide. In this case, comment what you want to do as a programmer and I'll do my best to help you choose one. Also, before we continue, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss upcoming videos. Ok, now let's move on to the second step on becoming a programmer. This is an important step, so stay focused. And the second step is all about learning the language of your choice, as well as the basics of coding. In order to make your life easier, I've made a Google Docs document containing a roadmap. Here you will find lots of learning resources, as well as books, useful websites, cheat sheets, videos, guides, etc. Each of them are separated into categories, techniques, technologies and languages. Let's say you want to make a website. Here you go, you should learn HTML, CSS and then JavaScript. As you see, there is lots of links. Open any of them and start learning step by step. There is even a recommendations on what software to use for web development at the bottom. So feel free to use this roadmap. I'll leave a link to this Google Docs document in the description below. But of course, you can use different roadmaps maps, as there is lots of open source programming roadmaps available. One of them is roadmap.ash website. Check it out as well, as it contains a step-by-step -step guide to becoming a programmer in literally any role, whether you want to be an iOS developer or a blockchain developer or maybe a game developer. There is a roadmap available for each of these paths. Just open the desired page and you will see the visual representation of selected roadmap. Here you want to select the branch or itself and in-depth description will pop up, alongside with uh, free learning resources, useful articles and videos. And all of this will help you to start learning programming. But as we all know, Practice is what makes perfect, and that's what you want to do next. You see, programming is the art of solving problems. Every time you write code, you're solving a problem. And each line of code you write is a tiny solution to a mini puzzle. Learning how to code enhances your ability to take complex problems, break them into small manageable pieces and eventually figure out working solutions. That's why proper learning process should involve lots of practice. There is even a website made specifically for that reason. And one of them is Euler Project. It provides about 1000 challenging programming problems that you can solve. Of course, some of them are very niche based, although solving even 100 of them will help you to better understand how to write code and solve problems. Other similar website is Code Wars, and this one is a bit more interactive. Here you can practice programming by solving common problems as well. One of its benefits is that challenges here are separated into so-called ranks. The hardest challenges is first Q and the easiest is 8Q. Let's take one of the 8Q challenges as an example, just to showcase you how it looks. This one called Simple Multiplication, and the description of the problem says this kata is about multiplying a given number by 8, if it is an even number, and by 9 otherwise. Sounds pretty easy, aren't it? I'll use Python programming language and write down a straightforward solution. After that, when we're done writing the code, let's hit test button below. And voila! All the tests are passed, which means we successfully solved this problem. What's also fun about it is that after submitting your own solution, you can actually see how other programmers managed to solve it. As you can see, even with this uh, easy task, there is tons of different approaches. 
And last but not least, there is a website called LeetCode. It'll also help you to prepare for technical interviews, as well as provide uh, lots of programming problems to solve and train your coding skills. Ok, all of this sounds cool, but what if I tell you there is a hidden pitfall? You see, the better you get at solving problems on these platforms, the worse you might get at solving real life ones. This phenomena is usually called a lead code hero or something like that. It means you've over practiced those challenges and have little to none real world experience. Now how to avoid this pitfall? As easy as it may sound, just make real world projects. Now, not necessarily commercial ones, it can be your own pet projects. A pet project is a software, a game, a script, literally any project that you can work on when you have a free time. The main purpose here is to gather experience on writing a real code. Take for example one of my Python pet projects. It was an OpenCV based bot that allowed a player to automatically do the fishing in the game called Terraria. Although it was pretty simple, the experience I've got from it was priceless. And actually, I've got one more piece of advice for you. Aside from solving problems and building your pet projects, you should also focus on learning common algorithms and patterns. That alone will make a huge impact on the quality of the code you write. You see, in programming, a common problems usually solved by using a well-known algorithms. Bubble sort, Fibonacci sequence, Huffman coding, Dijkstra algorithm, etc. There is hundreds of them and all are meant to efficiently solve a given problem. Take for example a blowfish. It's a symmetric key block cipher algorithm. This is widely used for hashing user passwords. This way, instead of uh, say a password 1234, a server will store your password like this. And when someone will hack the database instead of your actual passwords, they will get this non-readable abracadabra. What? What the? And that's one of the reasons why you should know and use common algorithms. And the same goes for programming patterns. A pattern is like a template for how you should write code to achieve a desired structure or a behavior. By learning patterns, you will write cleaner and higher quality code. Also, because patterns are well known among programmers, other people will be able to read your code more easily. And two of the most common patterns are singletone and finite state machine. And if you ask me, there is no developer on this planet who doesn't know about these two patterns. That's why you should also definitely dive into patterns at some point, it'll make your code so much better. And last but not least piece of advice for you, use Google search more often. Chances are 90% of all the issues you'll face while writing code have already been discussed somewhere. So feel free to Google your error, warning, bug, how to write code, uh, literally anything. If you write your search prompt correctly, you'll almost always find a solution, because someone in the past probably had the exact same issue. I'd even say that Googling is a separate skill for a programmer. The better you google, the faster you find answers to your questions, which means you will struggle less and spend less time finding a working solution. Ok, with all that being said, that's basically how you become a programmer. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing supernatural about it. You can even start right now at home sitting by the computer. It just takes time and consistent effort, one step at a time. As a result, eventually you will become a programmer and write code as a professional. And don't forget to check the description, I'll leave all the useful links down below. Roadmaps, problem solving websites, books, learning resources, etc. Everything will be there. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I hope all this information was useful for you and if so, make sure to also subscribe to my channel, leave a like and ring that bell. Have a great day and don't forget! Programming isn't about just typing code, it's about turning your ideas into real life.